Let's talk some more about strega. We already showed a lot of the sounds strega can make in the first video. So this time, let's get a little deeper into how they're made. The way we think about this instrument while exploring it will have a tangible effect on the sounds that it makes. Whether a thought is spoken or not, it is a real thing and has powers of reality. So when we look at strega, there are a couple possible approaches. There's the scientific approach, where we separate strega into its component parts and find their place in a categorization system so that we can use our existing knowledge to accurately describe the instrument. We could do that. We could say something like, Strega's triangle core VCO is driven through a specially designed nonlinear wave shaper, then routed through a bipolar VCA into a network of three delay circuits, each of which follows a unique feedback path through the filter circuits as well as unique responses to the time control and the three time CV inputs. The delayed signals are mixed with the dry signals via the blend control. There's also an external line level input with preamplification with an envelope follower and associated control voltage output. So yeah, there's the scientific approach and it has its uses. But if we go too far down that path, we'll end up describing and categorizing the instrument so thoroughly there will be no reason left to play it. So I'd also like to consider a more alchemical approach. Alchemy in the literal sense is the attempt to find a combination of materials that creates nominally unattainable results like the creation of gold or an elixir for eternal life. In playing Strega, the alchemical approach will be Rather than isolating and defining each element of the instrument, we will explore the way the elements mingle together to create something beyond the elements themselves. The creation or destruction of matter is generally not allowed in science. So, like all art, this is illicit practice. Let's begin. If we consider the Strega experiment, it begins with activation and ends with a result. Activation allows the tones to be heard. When we turn it down, it gets quiet. When we turn it up, it gets loud. Like other circuits, activation has a CV input. Also like other circuits, activation has a touch gateway, this gold square. We can use this gateway to inject signals into activation from the various touch bridges, the gold circles. For example, there are several tonic bridges that give us access to different subharmonics of the main tonic. Always bubbling under the surface of the Strega experiment are the interference signals. We can see interference notated where it enters the tonic and activation controls. Interference is a signal that is affected by the time and filter settings. Even if we turn blend down so we don't hear time and filter too loudly, we can still hear how they interfere with tonic and activation when the interference controls are turned up. Activation. And tonic. Now let's turn blend up and listen to the time circuits. 
There are several of them inside Strega, and each responds a little differently to all the controls, including decay and filter. You might notice when you jostle time a little, you can hear the echoes changing pitch. And you can hear that there are a few of them. Also notice that when you make very slight adjustments to the fine tune of time, you hear the rippling effect of several echoes changing speeds across each other. We can automate this by patching the agitation function to an attenuated time input. Time modulation input at the top is AC coupled and normal to the subharmonics output. It subtly modulates time. All modulations become more intense as the decay and absorb controls are turned up. also has touch gateways. As time goes slower, we'll hear more sub-rhythms generated by the time circuits themselves. as well as more noise in general, which can be sculpted by the filter and absorb settings. This also creates interference signals that are in time with the time circuits. Turn off activation, turn down decay, and speed up time so that sound decays away. Then slow time back down again. We can hear only the time circuits themselves with no tones input. Lowest speeds they can become unstable. Sending interference or subharmonics into the time circuits via the touch bridge can be interesting here. even do negative modulation to really push the time circuits to their lower limits.
really get an alchemical melting pot going here. There are many Strega experiments to be had. We'll be doing lots more, so stay tuned, and happy patching.